If you haven't seen my rotary brooch videos, go and check those out to see the build of this tool. A few people commented, they don't own a surface grinder. How can they grind a hex or a square brooch? Well, we're going to find out. The idea of this is to take what is a pretty interesting and cool tool and make it more accessible to more people. We're going to look at grinding these using a mill, using a lathe, and also a bench grinder. So you've got a milling machine. Joe Pizinski showed this method using a cup wheel. You can actually use your mill as a tool and cutter grinder. Joe used a spindexer, but also collet blocks would be a decent option. Quickly made up an arbor for this cup wheel. Let's do an example with collet blocks. I've got this 8mm hex brooch and I want to turn it into a 6mm. I need a hex collet block in this case. You can get hex collet blocks and you can get square collet blocks. This will let you do both hex and square tools. Problem with these though, these sides are parallel to the axis of the tool. When we present this tool to the wheel, we don't want it parallel, we want to kick it down a bit so we get a bit of back relief. An angle block would be the easy solution to change this angle by about three degrees. The other thing that you do, and also if you don't have collet blocks, is to make your own fixture. This is a tool sharpening system and I'll demonstrate this at the bench grinder for making up more of these brooch bits. So if you had a bore in here that's the right size for your brooch bit, you tighten this down on your brooch bit and then use this block to index your four or six times. And if you're smart about the design of this block, you could also add some back taper to it for every single side and that way you get your relief. Pretend this is our angle block that we want. One thing to be aware of, if this tape is not fixed, this can be changing the height of your tool. So if I've got my tool here, that's obviously not as tall as there, so my tool would drop down or it'd be taller. So you wouldn't get a nice shape if this wasn't fixed. A spot of super glue in here will hold this in place and that way you've got the same consistent height for every single cut. I'm just going to chalk this up and sit it maybe about there. So I'm going to put that in with a slight back taper, maybe about that. And that way I can set my block up on that angle. Okay, let's try this out. Because the rotary brooch tool has already kicked off at one degree, you need to make sure that any back relief you have is more than one degree. So two to three degrees is probably ideal. That's our first cut, and it actually looks decent. Index around and we'll do our second cut. The mill worked absolutely fine. You don't need a surface grinder. What if you've only got a lathe? Once there's plants for sale, I'll get rid of those. In terms of tool grinding on the lathe, there's two methods that I can think of. One, you have your tool, ideally in a collet rather than a chuck, and you index this around the required number of times. You have a tool post grinder and you cut the flats that way. Then there's the other method, which I'll show. You have your tool in your tool post and we index the tool around. Let's have a look at that. Depending on your lathe, indexing the tool could actually be quite easy. My lathe here has this curved surface here, but some lathes have a boring table here, in which case you can clamp the tool down in a collet block and then you'd be able to index it on a boring table. You could also use the top of your compound here, the slot in here. And I'm sure you could find a way to bolt a collet block down on here and clamp it down. That would work. You make some other kind of indexing fixture to go on your lathe somehow. I'm not going to do any of that though. I'm going to go back to a normal tool post. Put a new tool post. To index my tool, I've got this 1214 hex stock. I've reamed a 10 millimeter hole in it and put a set screw in. This fits nicely in my tool post. Ideally, I'd have a thicker wall left on here. Here's a tool I prepared earlier. Now for this process, I think we'll use the cross slide here. And we need to kick the tool off at the desired angle. So let's say that. Okay, let's try this. Now the biggest problem with this lathe method is not having a stop on this. Let's stop and fix that. I quickly made up this shaft collar and just used a set screw to lock it to the hex stock. If you're going to use this method, I'd seriously recommend tightening the gibs on your compound, just so you can't accidentally knock it. 
You will notice that the hex is a little bit irregular. This isn't exactly precision. This hole is put in using a three jaw and this is just raw stock. Quick and dirty just to demonstrate the principle. Now let's have a look at a more elaborate fixture on the bench grinder. We're over at the wobbly bench grinder and I've got this set up. I didn't design this, this isn't mine. This is a kit from Eccentric Engineering, an Australian company, not sponsored or anything. This is an end mill or lathe tool sharpening fixture. There's this parallelogram setup, which keeps whatever tool you've got constrained rotation wise. And then there's the rail here, which constrains your parallelogram to run in a line. Now the tool block that I showed you earlier is from this set and it goes in here. We need to have a think about how we grind our tool. We could grind like this on the side. That's not great to be side wheeling, but the preferred method would be to come from the side and grind the tool that way on the front edge. We unlock this, we can change our angle of rotation so that we're grinding where we want to. Now by setting the rotation of this, I can set my back relief. And I can also adjust this taper. I had to take the guard off to make all this fit close enough. And for the safety Nazis, there's the plug. So we won't run this under power. It wouldn't take much to make your own fixture. Just make sure you consider the guard clearance. Normally this setup is for an end mill, so you've got longer stick out and you're further back. So this would normally not be an issue. But I'll demonstrate this one. Of course, not under power, no guard. So we've got our tool, slide this across, plunge it in until you hit your stop. You've plunged in and taken your cut, slide it back, take it out, we release this. This section in here can index around. And you set this face down flat to index it, and then you lock it down. Lefty loosey, righty tighty idiot. So now we're 90 degrees from where we started. Put this on, slide across, take a cut. I think you can get the idea. So you can make your own setup similar to that and you'd be able to grind a brooch. Admittedly, a bit of work in that. Probably lathe or mill is the easier option, but you can do this too. Regardless of what you're using, mill, lathe, whatever, rather than using collet blocks or a system like this, a dividing head or a spindexer would obviously be a preferred choice if you've got one available. Just make sure you cover any machine ways. What are these doing here? Oh yeah, I've got plans available. Now I want to say a big thank you to Pierre in New South Wales. He sent me a set of micrometers. Really, really big thank you, Pierre. This is absolutely awesome. Gonna put these to good use. I'm quite interested in moving up into bigger sizes, so this is gonna work really, really well. This video is a bit different, it's a bit more detailed, so let me know if you enjoyed it. This video is to make these brooches more accessible to people, and hopefully means more people can own a rotary brooch now. That'd be awesome to see. And if you are interested in building a rotary brooch, I do have plans available, link below, which takes you to an Etsy store and you can get them there. Happy tool grinding, make sure you cover your ways. Catch you later. All this, link in description.